In this three-part series, I'm going to show you how to create shower walls in a van that look exactly like natural stone, but are super light and extremely durable. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is template the walls and I do this using a template material I get from stone coat countertops and you basically just cut the pieces staple them up and then you can adhere them together using acetone just put a drop or two of acetone and hold them together for about 10 seconds and they'll stay together the great thing about this is that once you're done you can just take the whole template down and use it to cut your pieces for these shower panels, I'm going to be using quarter inch plywood. And the reason I'm doing that is that it's flexible and that I can bend them to the curvature of the back of the shower wall. So I just lay it down, the, the template down that I made, I draw a pencil line, and then I go ahead and I'll just cut. You can see I've made a uh, template uh, holes where the, uh, the spigot is and also the valve. And then I just cut the panels along the pencil lines and I like to cut them just a little bit oversized because once I have them all finished, then I'll cut them just exactly the size they need to fit tightly into the shower. And so just cut maybe a quarter of an inch oversized on this part. So once I've got all the pieces cut, I'm going to prime them and these are going to be light colored shower panels, uh, kind of a marble, a white marble look. And so I'm using a white primer and I'm going to prime all of the pieces before I start them with the epoxy. So I give the primer about four or five hours to uh, dry and then we're going to be on to the epoxy pour. Okay, so today we're going to be pouring the epoxy shower panels. And so these are all the panels. These are the two sides of the shower. These two pieces over here are the back of the shower. This is the ceiling. And then there's a strip on the other side that'll be a couple of pieces um, on the back side. So what we're gonna be using is this epoxy that's mainly used for countertops. And it's by Stonecup Countertops. Now we have done our entire kitchen with this. We've done our master bathroom. We did a wet room. Um, and so we have got a little bit of experience with this, but we're gonna do something a little bit different today, right? Right. What are we gonna be doing? This is called a dirty pour. And a dirty pour, or sometimes I call it an exotic pour. What we did in our kitchen and our shower is we poured just white, uh, we, we tinted this white, and then we just poured it, and then we created veins and lines with our hands and with popsicle sticks and different things. This we're gonna be mixing all the colors into a bucket and then we're gonna just pour it out and let it just flow, kind of like mother nature, trying to recreate um, a look that, that would, a you'd find in nature. Look. Yep. So what you wanna do is the, you mix these two one to one. 48 ounces of this one. So we're gonna do 48 ounces of this, so that's gonna bring it up to the 96. You'll be able to see how much thicker that is. If you put this one in first, it'll stick to the sides and you won't be able to get a mix very well. Mix it for two minutes. Get it all really mixed together. All right, I think that's been two minutes. What do you think? That's good. Okay, so I'm ready to pour the back panel. Now on the front panels that I did yesterday, did them a little more subtle. There's mostly white and gray with some uh, variation and some some uh, veins on this back panel because that's what you're gonna see when you look into the shower I wanted to do it just a little more bold so we're gonna do a little more of an exotic pour in this one I've made up enough material to cover this back panel as well as 
the ceiling and this little one up here is for strips on either side of the, the inside of the shower where the door is. So I want to have enough to do about five ounces per square foot. So I made up a gallon, 128 ounces. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this out into these cups. I'm going to mix different colors into them. Um, I'm also going to put some in this cup, which is going to be for my, um, I'm going to do a darker section. I'm going to do the light and then do a darker section kind of down the middle. And I'm going to use that cup. And then I'm going to pour a little bit into one just to have enough to get everything lubricated before I pour. So here we go. I think I'll start with this guy. It's okay if a little bit spills out because I'm going to want to lube up this, um, this piece before I start doing the pour anyway. Okay, now I've got a bunch of colors. I'm just going to start mixing them. I definitely want to have um, some white. Okay, so this is an opaque white dye. I'm going to do a couple of these cups with the white dye. And then for the main pour, I'm going to have pretty subtle colors. So I'm going to do one in, um, let's go with, we're going to do one with a, with a white paint. So the white dye is opaque. The white paint is going to be a little more translucent. Because they're different materials, as they mix, they're kind of going to want to fight each other and create some interesting effects. I'm going to do granite, which is a little darker gray. Stone gray, which is a lighter, more of a tan gray. Coastal gray. What we're going to do for the darker spray down the middle. I'm going to do some black. Okay, actually, I'm going to do another cup, about half full. I'm going to do my a pearl powder in this one. Pearl white metallic powder. I'm going to give it a little bling. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to mix all these up. This is the one with the white opaque dye. So that one's more translucent. Then I'm going to get into my grays. Mix these up. And what I want to do is just give it some, a little bit of color to start with this and metallic bronze. Pour this in the bottom, pretty good amount of that, okay, then I'm going to do a little bit of a gray, I'm going to spray a little bit more, I'm going to do some silver. a little of the, the spray paint white, which is more translucent. Go with the oil bronze, a little bit of that in there. These metallics react a little bit differently in the paint, so they'll create some cool effects. Okay, so that's good for that one. Now, in this one, I'm just going to do a, get it a little bit in the bottom, and then I'm going to do a little bit. I mean, this one I'm going to go a little darker because this is going to be the more the darker streak down the down the middle. So I'm going to go with these darker ones and layer them in, but the blacks and the dark grays are going to be more in this one. A little bit of the matte black just to create a little different effect. And this, there's really no rhyme or reason to this. You just kind of 
layer them and mix them however you want. A little bit more black, and that should be good. So what now I'm gonna do is pour some of the black out here. You just wanna coat the board with a little bit of epoxy so that it flows really well when you do the uh, pour out the bucket fulls. So I've got this taped off, and the reason for that is I want this uh, epoxy to stay on here for a little while before it starts to flow off the edges. And so it's just gonna help hold it because I'm gonna pour quite a bit of material. We'll leave it for about 45 minutes to an hour, and then we'll pull the tape off and let it flow over the edges. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this bucket, and this is gonna be one panel. This is the bottom, and then it angles and goes up the back wall. So I want this to look pretty, um, much the same, like one piece. So this is my lighter color. I'm gonna do this down the two sides, and then I'm gonna come back um, with the dark down the middle. You wanna pour pretty slowly. All right, that's pretty good for that. Now we'll go with this one down the middle. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, now that I've got this out, I just wanna make sure that it's um, covering everything. This actually has a pretty long open time, like 45 minutes to an hour that you can keep working with it. It's going to take about 24 hours to dry. Um, so you got lots of time, you don't have to rush anything. You can get it just the way you want it. Heating it up like this makes it uh, move a little bit easier. So you just kind of get it to where... You can also use a heat gun because it's blowing out air to actually move the veins and the lines. So I've got this, I want this to flow down to this edge, so I'm just heating it up right along, right in here. Okay, so that got it to flow into this edge. Now I'm going to heat it up and get it to move back that way a little bit. And just to soften this, this up as well, so I can get some movement on it. Okay. We're going to lift this end and really get it to move. And see where it's where it's warmer, it's moving a lot. The sides are moving a little more than I want, so I'm warming the middle up. Alright, now the middle's starting to move a little bit. Now this is going to keep moving for a couple of hours, so this isn't going to be the end result. Everything tends to just kind of soften up over time. There we go, it's moving down. So that looks pretty good. This is going to continue to move as it, um, as it starts to, to dry and cure, but for a couple of hours, um, actually probably four or five hours with, because of the temperature, it's about 65 in here, it's going to keep moving and everything will get a little bit softer, uh, some of these harsh edges. You can kind of see how that kind of flows. With these two pieces are together, it'll look very similar. So I like this. I like the way it looks. So I think that all of the panels turned out really nicely. I love the way they look, especially the back ones that have that uh, darker effect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit them with a matte epoxy finish that I just roll on, and then we'll be ready to install them in the next video. So watch part two to see how we install these in the van.